Hey YouTube, this is the Touch Lead, and today's video is about creating a test plan. If you have any questions, the full transcript will be available in the link in the description below. In the software lifecycle process, before any new application is deployed to any end user, it should be tested. Without proper testing, the application can be filled with bugs and defects, and then lead to a bad user experience. This video will cover what is a test plan, how do you create a test plan, and what happens after the test plan is created. First, what is a test plan? Anyone who is new to the QA world may be wondering, what is a test plan? This is a fundamental question, and it is important that we define it. A test plan is a document that details the process, coverage, resources, objectives, and schedule for testing a software product. The test plan is essentially the blueprint for the testing efforts that will take place. It will make sure that the software meets all the requirements asked of it. And finally, a test plan gives a clear visual to the outside users, such as a client, of what the application is tested for. How do you create a test plan? The first step you should take in creating a test plan is to analyze the product that is being tested. Next, go through the requirements presented by the product owners. At a minimum, each requirement list should have a test scenario associated with it in the test plan. From there, you would also think, from an end user's perspective, about what the workflows will possibly need to be tested. For each test plan you have, you should have test cases and test scripts associated with it. Test cases outline individual test scenarios that will be covered in the test plan. The steps to carry out each test case is called the test script. It should be as detailed as possible so that someone who has never seen that test application prior will still be able to follow along. Depending on the team structure, you should also clearly define the roles of the testing and what tests will be automated and which tests will be manually tested. You should also keep in mind the different testing types when coming up with a test plan such as unit tests, system tests, and integration tests. Finally, depending on the application being tested, the test plan should also state the different environments that will be tested in. What happens after the test plan is created? Once the test plan is created, the testing process can finally start. Pass and fill criteria should also be stated for each test in the test plan. All testing results should be documented with each run. This is important to confirm that test coverage and accountability. Any test that fails should be logged as a bug or defect in the management system that you use. It should also be communicated with your team and discussed if it will be fixed before or after the adaptation is released. Once a previous bug or defect is fixed, it should go back through the testing phase. You should not only test the specific area where the bug or defect was found, but also the other core functionality again. Often when something is fixed, the required change may have an indirect effect on other parts of the application. This is why you test the other parts as well as the initial part that had the defect. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you have ideas for future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.